Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Conceive, believe, achieve. Shut the f up. <laughs> You're listening to Believe You Me with Michael the Count Bisbing. You know my name yet? And Anthony Lionheart Smith. It's like ESPN. Yeah, 100%. The ESPN ain't got shit on us. Today we are joined by the one and only, the legendary Chris Wyman. Chris, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, dude, come on. When, when I saw you at the uh, 300 Wayne show and we were chatting away a little bit, I'm like, hold on a minute. Got to get the uh, the All-American on. I was trying to think of your nickname there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all right. All right. Yeah. I'm, so, uh, yeah. We're going to talk about... Uh, so some stuff in MMA, but we're going to start with you first. You had a fight just recently, UFC Atlantic City, Bruno Silva. And how's the eye looking now? Is it, is it healed up? I mean, look at that. It's kind of nasty. I don't know which way to turn, but yeah, it's, uh, I got no issues with my uh, eyesight. It just looks, looks awful. It looks weird. It looks like a pink eye now because the black eye has recited. I had a nice, nice shiner for a while. Uh, that, that came down. I had a cut and everything that they just... We just kind of like stereo stripped together. I thought it was going to need stitches, but we just stereo stripped it. And once the uh, the swelling came down, it came together nice. And I, I'm just left with a little red eye. You just got to get the digs in. There's nothing wrong with the eyesight. I know you'd be concerned for me. So I just wanted yeah. to make sure you know, like, you know, yeah, it looks yeah, weird, yeah. but uh, not, nothing wrong with the eyesight, thank God, because I know. I, I'm not trying to pull a biz bang in this part of my career. I could be lying right now. Maybe I'm maybe I'm blind in one eye, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep it quiet for a while. Try well, to, to be bang. fair, you've had your fair share of injuries over the years as well. Mm -hmm. How many surgeries would you estimate you've had? It's I know for a fact because I've had a lot of downtime with all my surgeries to count them. So it's been at 30 surgeries on the dot. Uh, 30. Yeah. So I had, uh, I had four leg surgeries and then I had a shoulder surgery when I was recovering too. And that shoulder surgery, uh, ended up becoming my, it was my 30th surgery. So a lot of surgeries, wow. man. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's crazy. I think a lot of people don't realize when they go down this path, what they're getting themselves into. Obviously don't want to sit here and say, well, was me. I've had a lot of surgeries as well, but people always ask me when I talk about this stuff, they say, if you knew now what, what was going to happen to your body, would you change it? Would you still do it? And I always say, absolutely, yes. I live a great life. What would your answer be, Chris? A hundred percent. Yeah. I, I mean, I've had, I had so many surgeries just from wrestling. Uh, you know, like my physical therapist and stuff when I was in college, if they would have, you know, were, were to be told that I was going to go on and keep competing, even in wrestling, they thought I, they would think I would be crazy. Uh, so let alone to have the career I had and then the pile up of surgeries just in MMA. I mean, I do it because I love it, man. Um, I just, I love competing and I wouldn't have any other way. Obviously there's some things that would change, like things I would tell the younger generation as they're up and coming. For me, one thing was strength, strength and conditioning. I, I never gave a crap about strength and conditioning at all. Like I kind of avoided it when it came to doing strength stuff, even in, uh, even in college, I kind of like would avoid it. Be like, Oh, this, this hurts my knee. This hurts this. And I just kind of like, I'd be fine not doing it because in the room I wasn't getting thrown around. Like I didn't feel like I had a, like a deficiency with strength. So I didn't feel like I needed to really do it. But what happens is when you don't strengthen those joints and those ligaments and all those tendons by forcing, you know, heavy weight on it, you, you, I think you'll have injuries. So I, just by being around a lot of people that do strength training and then guys who don't, I feel like the guys who do strength training are better off with not getting injuries. Yeah, yeah. And you just came from strength training right now because this is our second little restart. We started and we were having a bit of banter. Then yeah. we restarted. It was like there was a little awkwardness that they were like, we'll, we'll, we'll fake it for a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you just like came. You You're a pro. You came back to it. I, I thought you were going to start like, with it. I like it. That was very organic. Yeah, no, well, yeah. that's what we're trying to do here. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no bullshit. We pull the curtain yeah. back. Um, you just came from strength training. You fought, what, two weeks ago? Three weeks ago? Almost three weeks ago. Saturday will be three weeks, yep. So when do you want to fight again? I got so much. They, you know, Mick Maynard, right after the card, hit me up, and he was like, man, we the Jersey, uh, you know, the Jersey crowd and, and oh, yeah. you know, everybody there, there was just a – there was a lot of love in the, in the building. So they were, they wanted to get me back for the Jersey card, but it's a little too soon for me. And I got a lot of stuff going on early June. So I'm, I'm not going to do it then, but maybe, maybe later in the summer or something, maybe the MSG card in November, which would be kind of late, but I, I'd hold off for a card like that. Um, we'll see summer, early fall, something like that. The sphere, I think that might be September. 
Listen, I'm, you, I've kind of done it all. Like, I want some cool. You got, you got no. some Mexican blood in you? <laughs> no, but my wife, my wife's Puerto Rican. That might count yeah, or something. My that, kids got some Puerto Rican blood in them. I mean, it's called, they speak Spanish. Yeah, it's just like all the way Americans claim Irish. You can claim Mexican somewhere. You that know is I mean? true. Everyone in America is Irish at this point, especially <laughs> Conor McGregor. It's crazy. There's like two million Irish people in Ireland. Maybe three million, four million. I don't know, but it's not that many people. But I feel I think it's like seventy five percent of white people in America claim that they're Irish. You know, yeah. because they have a little bit of Irish in them, and you know Ellis Island and everything. I'm I'm fifty percent Irish, um, so I can feel it. My mom's Irish, like legit Irish. Speaks with an Irish accent, accent, so she does. Um, Chris, I got to ask you about this. But do you say you're you? You would say you're you're English. You don't you don't mess with the you don't tell people you're Irish. Yeah. I say I'm English. Yeah, of yeah, course yeah. I do. Yeah. But, you know, but I say I've got, I'm proud to have Irish family. I've done nothing against it. But first and foremost, I'm English, but my mom's Irish and I got a yeah. tremendous amount of family there. So, yeah, I'm English, Irish. I'm a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, I don't think America's not there yet. We don't have a nationality yet where you're like, you're just American. Yeah. No, I, I, I feel like, you know, yeah, it's almost there. I, and it's going further away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's true. It's, it's, it's not true. getting closer. Um, no. We have something in common. Of course, we both have a victory over the legendary Anderson Silva. You have two, but you were the first man to ever do it, not once, but twice in a row. Of course, and you know where I'm going with this, when you beat him, he snapped his leg, right? And then you snap your leg. Just mm -hmm. like I said with uh, the Max Holloway uh, versus Just Engaging movie. Uh, Phil, fight. If you saw that in a movie, one second left, you wouldn't believe it. If you mm. saw this story about this legendary fighter that gets beat by you, snaps his leg, and then you snap your leg, you'd call bullshit in that film as well. I mean, talk to me about that thought process, Chris, when, when you actually snapped your leg. Yeah, man. Karma's a bitch, I guess. You know, what can I say? Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But that's what Twitter tells me. I uh, it, it was just, it was crazy, man. It was mind boggling. When I seen my leg, snap like that first I, I went from being the guy with the strongest bones ever everyone was like oh chris is made of titanium that's why you know he was able to break in his silver's leg i was that guy and then i was the guy with no bone density at all so i had you know quite the shift of uh of opinions on like my body but um when i first kicked uriah hall the first mo the first thing that went to my head was like that was a hard-ass kick like he's not taking more of those and then when my leg went back and there was no leg anymore and i fell down and I looked at my leg, the first thought in my mind was like, because the only time I've ever seen that really was Anderson Silva. I go, holy shit, what that, that can't be my leg. That's just right away, I thought of Anderson. And then the other thing that popped in my head, I remember, man, like after he let, he broke his leg, I didn't know he broke his leg, right? So I, I, I started circling the octagon. I just thought he was in pain. Uh, leading up to that leg break, I, I, was, I was like dominating the fight, almost every aspect. I just had dropped him in the first round with the punches. You know, I knocked him out in the first fight. Then we're on our feet where he's supposed to be dominant, you know, and he's got his hands up this time. And then I drop him, ground and pound him, you know, pretty good in the first round. Second round, he throws a leg kick, and I check it for the first time. In the first fight we fought, he leg kicked the crap out of me. So we did go into the second fight very understanding, like, all right, we got to make sure we deal with these leg kicks better. Uh, and so I circle around, and, I, and all of a sudden I remember, like, just screaming at the top of, you know, his lungs, it sounded like he was being murdered. And I'm like, what the hell? And I go over to him and I see his leg like that. I'm like, oh, my God, that's freaking awful. Um, and uh, so I remember him screaming. I go, holy crap, this is going to hurt. And, and as soon as I thought that, boom, the pain set in and it was terrible, bro. And I just was like, get me, get me, put me to sleep. I need painkillers. This is this is it. Yeah. And then, they're, you know, they feel my leg. They can't feel a pulse. So I know what that means. And I'm like, uh oh, um, and there was just, you know. And then it was the beginning of a long recovery. And the cool thing is me and Anderson with our fights, you know, we, we had, we definitely had some bad blood. Um, yeah, I think we were pretty cordial with each other for the most part, but there was like some bad blood that happened behind the scenes and stuff like that. So I wasn't like, you know, obviously I'm a fan of him. I have a lot of respect for him and his fight style. And I think he's a great person, especially now, but at the time there was some bad blood. But after I broke my leg, he reached out next to a note. We're on a phone call. And he probably gave me the most comfort of anybody I spoke to because he's been through it. And he was just super encouraging that I was going to be able to get through this moment. Just, you know, it's all it's all mental. Wow. And, uh, you know, and he, he, he was really great. Um, yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Because, yeah. you know, Anderson Silva, same thing. I, I did my best to try and instigate a little bit of shit talk because it sells the fight and all the rest well, of you're, it. You're, Andy, you're good with that. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, he popped for steroids. You know what I'm saying? So the gloves are fight? No. Oh, before no. you fight. Yeah, uh, the Nick Diaz fight, the fight before it. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like yeah, the gloves yeah, I are remember. off at that point. The gloves are off. Yeah. Um, but afterwards, again, he was just such a gentleman. And he really is. Um, in yours, though, Chris, the, the bone popped out of the leg, right? Yeah. So <laughs> that the I guess yeah, the only I'm the only person that's ever had a bone actually come out of the leg or or any that's something to be proud of. Part. I'm the only compound <laughs> fracture in the history of the sport. I mean, so with everything I had to go through, at least I got a record, you know, it's, it's, I got that going for me, but yeah, it, uh, the bone came out. I saw the bone come out and the, it's funny. I'm going to show it because the UFC still didn't. And even when they did my E60, they didn't put out the videos that they have of actually my bones coming out and the blood and everything like that as, as, as gory as the UFC could be. And E60, I thought they were going to go more into like some of the nasty stuff that happened, especially, you know, my leg, the, the bones coming out and all that. And then even when I had, um, I had an infection that got pretty nasty. It was down to the bone. They didn't really go into that. They didn't want to make it like, you know, too, too nasty looking. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to, I think I'm going to put that video out just to, just to show people how nasty the whole thing was. I can only imagine how painful that was. Not, not only have you snapped your leg, which, you know, I saw Anderson when he snapped his against yours, I was front row and I remember seeing him uh, get carried by on a stretcher and he was howling his head off. Yeah. It was haunting. That's the best yeah. word. It yeah. was, it was, it was horrible. And then on top of that, you've got your bone popping out your leg. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, try, it was... try and describe that pain, Chris. <sighs> Bro, let's put it like this. I was the biggest bitch ever. I want to, you know, you want to be tough. You're, you're in front of millions of people. I was crying and screaming for my wife. I wouldn't go on the ambulance until my wife was there because I know she's, she's somewhere in the crowd. You know, sometimes the UFC doesn't give our families the best seats that she was, she was up top. <laughs> I was on, I was like the second fight on the pay-per-view uh, and, but they didn't have the best seats. So she had to get through security and everything to get down to me. And I was like, I'm not going anywhere without my wife. So I'm like, scream, it felt like uh, Rocky, but um, yeah, I, it was, it was awful, man. I remember another embarrassing part of that is Dana came to the hospital, which props to him to come, which is, you know, really nice uh, because he doesn't have to do that. And he came while they were like trying to they were going to try to put the bones back in and reset them. And the way they do that, they had to put you in a little bit of a twilight sleep. So I was they, they gave me the max amount of pain medication that you could have all the morphine and everything. They couldn't give me any more. And I was still in so much pain. I was like crying in pain. Please just put me to sleep because they were going to have to wait till the next morning to do the surgery. So I had to wait through the whole night, you know, dealing with this pain. I'm like, you guys got to put me to sleep. So Dana comes in and I start crying to him. I've, I've never asked Dana for anything. There's plenty of things I probably should have asked for. I never, I just never was that guy. I didn't want to be like that. So Dana, he comes in, man. I'm, and I'm like, Dana, like I'm crying to him. I'm like, please make sure I have the best doctors because I'm paranoid. I'm in the middle of Jacksonville, Florida. Don't forget this is in during COVID. So I don't know what doctors they have there. I'm like, please just get me whatever connections you have. Get me the best doctors. Like I, I don't want to lose my leg. I don't want any, you know, I want to be able to walk again. That was the first thing. You know, because I didn't know what was going to happen with that. And uh, he was like, I got you, Chris. I got you. And he got me and my family a private jet back home, which was awesome. And uh, the pain after surgery was okay because they did a whole nerve block, you know, from the hip down. And so for about like three, four days, I was good. And then all of a sudden, then the pain came and it was brutal, bro. I couldn't, you know, to go to the bathroom, you know, I got to get up. And, you know, other than that, when I was laying down my leg up, I was okay. As soon as I would even bring it down a little bit, the, the, it was such an excruciating pain. It's hard to even describe uh, just to get to the bathroom, you know, to take a piss or mm. to take a dump, whatever it was. Like I was crying in pain for probably two months. Just any time I got up, it was just not normal because all those blood vessels, because the bones came outside the skin, it pierced through all the veins and the blood vessels and everything down the leg. So the blood would just pool as soon as I got up and it was just crazy, crazy pain. Yeah. Wow. I can only imagine. Um, you mentioned your wife there. Sorry. What's her name again? Marie V. Marie, Marie V. Oh, yeah. Marie. She sounds, she, she, she could be at the sphere. <laughs> yeah. She could be at the sphere. Yeah. She's very, yeah, there you very go. Latin. Latin. Uh, um, obviously I'm a married man as well. And we do this for our families. When you went through that, Chris, what was her, did she want you to hang up the gloves after that? Uh, I, I think it, it, I think she probably goes back and forth in her head. I think for my well being, she probably wants me to to give up. But she also knows mentally where I'm at. If I'm like super determined, she, she, 
if she goes against my determination, we're going to have a problem. You know, like, you, you know how it is. We're determined dudes. You don't get to the pinnacle of a sport or really any, of anything without being super determined. And if someone's doubting you or have a negative energy, like you shouldn't do this anymore, it's just bad for everybody. So she's, she's positive and, you know, she mm-hmm. likes the paychecks, you know, and, you know, she'll, she'll be fine. Yeah, she'll be That's good. it. They she's love super, the paychecks. She, she's supportive. She's very supportive. No, no I know. She, 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 yeah. Sounds like you've got a similar relationship to, to my wife because I say shit like that and I'm just busting balls. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. People are always like, oh my God, how could you say that? It's like, it's a joke. It's a joke. I, I bust balls like crazy and she hates it. As I, I bust balls with everybody and the one person I had to be careful of busting balls with was, is, is my wife. Yeah, she, yeah. She, no, because like, it, yeah. I'll go live on YouTube now and again and sometimes I drag Rebecca in and she comes and joins and that's all it turns into, just me busting her balls and shit yeah. like that. And everyone in the comment section is like, oh my God, he's so disrespectful. It's uh, like, how do you think we've stayed together for 25 years? Uh, you got to have a bit of fun, a little bit of teasing and back and forth. But you're flirting. You got to flirt. Is, you got to flirt. Yeah, a little bit. Without, without, our, without those ladies in our lives, you know what uh, I mean? I I'd doubt be, we would have. Yeah. I'd, be, I'd be screwed. I'd be really screwed. I'd be in a club right now. All my money would be gone. I don't even think I'd be, I I wouldn't have been a world champ for sure. I would have, I would be a freaking mess for sure. She holds me together. Yeah, no, and I've said it a million times about my lady. Um, So in a perfect world, Chris, because at at UFC Atlantic City, there was some kind of unofficial rumors swirling around that had you have lost that night, you were going to hang the gloves up. Was that true? I think so. Probably. Yeah. I I didn't really, I don't think I, I said that publicly, but if I wasn't beating Bruno Silva, because I felt good, my leg felt so much better, man. Thanks to TrinityGoldNutrition.com. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we let's got go. I'm on me. it. The Trinity Look, Gold. We got this is right. It. Yeah, it's the stuff works, man. Uh, we'll, we'll probably get into that later, but I, I feel I felt great. And if if I can't beat Bruno Silva, uh, not not to take anything away from him, but you know, I just I just have high expectations for myself. Then, like you know, what am I doing? So. Yeah, no, 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 without question. All right, this episode is sponsored by Eight Sleep, and they've been sponsoring the show for a while. If you don't know what it is, Eight Sleep is a mattress cover that will help you sleep better. Okay, simple as that. You have an app that you can track all your sleep on, and this is how it makes it better sleep because it cools down the bed or it heats up the bed, whatever your preference may be. And both sides of the beds, they will change. One side can go as low as 55 degrees. The other side can go as high as 110 degrees and you can just set however you want it. Then when you wake up, you look at the app, it will give you all of your measurements. It will tell you your REM sleep, your deep sleep, your quality of sleep, because the reality is this thing is packed full of science. It's easy to use. You just put the pot on, you plug it in, you download the app and you're off to the races. You just set it and change the settings on the app. It's so easy. It really is. And Rebecca's obsessed with this thing. She's telling me every day, Michael, your sleep quality last night was fantastic. And sleep science, by the way, shows us that in order for us to sleep at our best, the body temperature needs to drop in the middle of the night and then rise in the morning. And that's only achievable really with science like eight sleep. How else are you going to do that? Set your air conditioning on like a program to go low and then back up again? No, you can't do that. Eight sleep takes care of it at the source level. If your wife wants it cool or hot, she can have that and the same on your side as well. So as I said, there's no better way to improve your day-to-day life than better sleep. So give it a try. The eight sleep pod three is fantastic. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Go to eightsleep.com slash Bisping and you will get $200 off and free shipping eight sleep.com slash bispig to get $200 off and free shipping. You won't be disappointed if you make this investment eight sleep.com slash bisping for $200 off and free shipping. Um, any idea an opponent next? I think I want like a big name, you know, I want, I want with the Bruno Silva, not a big name. You know, I think it's time to like step up, have a fun fight that, you know, people want to see and people know me and him, you know, a lot of people, you know, Bruno Silva, they didn't really know his name and I didn't deserve to, you know, I had no right to pick my opponents or anything like that. Not that I'm going to be able to really pick my opponents, but if it was up to me, I would have a, a you know, a bigger name, a fight that means a little bit more, you know, with a win. So, mm. yeah. I mean, Chris, d- don't sell yourself short. You're a middleweight champion. You dethroned Anderson Silva, a man that defended about God knows how many times. Defended it then <laughs> yeah. three times as well. It's, yeah. you know, pr- pretty legendary status, Chris. Um, 
I threw around recently, and, and I was serious. I said, what about somebody like Sean Strickland? And then like people came at me in the comment section. I'm like, well, hold on a minute. Chris has like, got a massive name. Sean just came off the back of you know losing a close title fight. That would be a solid fight. Of course, he's now going to fight Paulo Costa. But would that have been a name that interested you? I would love that fight. You know, um, I got a lot of respect for Strickland. I think it would be a fun build up. He, I think he would bring me out of uh, being such a nice guy. I think we could trash talk a little bit, have some fun. Uh, so yeah, I would. I would love that fight. Um, I, I like his style. I like that he he pushes the pace. I like to push the pace. He likes to get that guys tired. So I like to test myself against a guy like that. You know, for sure. Yeah. No. Of course. Of course. Um, <clears throat> As I say, you were working the Wayne Show for UFC 300, which was a phenomenal event, main oh event, my Alex gosh. Pereira. Insane. Pereira versus Jamal Hill. Uh, so there's been a little bit of a, uh, what's the word, um, evolution, shall we say? Not an excuse from Jamal Hill, but there's been some theories. Daniel Cormier said it, Chael Sonnen said it. Harrington, jump on the screen a second, buddy. Did Jamal himself say it as well? I didn't see Jamal saying anything about the stoppage other than, uh, you know, he's he's still living the good life and he will be back stronger than ever and uh, call out for his next opponent. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, so what people are theorizing, have you seen this, Chris? Oh, yeah, I've seen this. Yeah, yeah, But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, I'll explain it for the fans. I think you do. Know exactly. You so, so so when Jamal threw the kick, kicked him a little bit low, ref goes to step in. He says, no, brother, I'm good, whatever, in Portuguese. That that caused Jamal to mentally switch off and, like, you know, and thought they were going to have a reset, right? So there's some people throwing around, not an excuse, but kind of a reason why maybe Pereira was able to catch him with that shot. A lot of people breaking it down, like Chael on his YouTube video, saying, look at the body language, look at the movement. He stops, he stops, and then a second later, boom, that shot lands. Um, and I understand what they're saying, but also at the same time, and I'm I'm friendly with Jamal. I think he's tremendous. He's entertaining. He's a hell of a fighter. I picked him to win the fight. Mm. If he yeah. hadn't landed the low blow, that whole interaction wouldn't have even happened. What's your thoughts, Chris? Was it even a real? Was it a low blow? Was it? Did it definitely hit the cup? It was. It was close, right? It was like right above the belt line, or like right. It was close. So that would be the first thing I would look at. Is like, all right, was it a low blow to begin with? Either way, Herb Dean stepped in. I mean, I think it's really, I think it's a far fetched thing to go for. They, I mean, you're in a fight, rep steps in, you're back to fighting, you know, and it wasn't like one second later he got knocked out. They, they were, they started exchanging and then he got, he got cracked. Um, I think it's a far fetched thing to, to, to put it all on that. I think Pereira was very focused and he saw an opening and he didn't want that, that momentum to, to, to go away and, and he didn't want to break in the action. And so he may have been more ready than Jamal Hill at that point because he had a plan. It looked like he he was ready to connect. I, I don't know. There was a little there was a little bit of a lapse, and I thought there was a little there was time for Jamal Hill to realize they're still fighting, and he got caught. You know, um, it's it's weird because coaches always say you've probably heard this a million times. I've talked about this, and I think people still don't get it when I try and explain it. It's like you've got to be ultra focused for 15 or 25 minutes. Cause I always say your mind drifts or you start to like, I don't know, external things, people, something going on outside the cage, you see yeah. Dana, or maybe you see your wife, the ring yeah. girls walking around yeah. something, whatever it is. And yeah. all of a sudden it takes your mind off the fact that yeah. there's a trained killer yeah. right in front of you. You know, have you ever experienced that? Bro, that's probably my Achilles heel is just being able to focus. Like when it comes to a 25 minute fight for me, it's not the it's not the cardio aspect that scares me. It's staying focused for that long. Yeah. You know, second rounds always have been my toughest when a three round fight because it's kind of like somewhere in the middle. My brain starts going in different directions. I'm not as focused. I don't see the ending yet. I don't see, you know, the beginning is kind of gone. It's I'm stuck in the middle. It's always it's always a weird round for me. Um and so attention span is the biggest thing. We're, we're all, you know, we're, I, I guess we're all smart in some ways, but also like I feel like all of us have ADD. <laughs> you know, every, every fighter Definitely. I know has some attention deficit <laughs> disorder. So I think that's one of the biggest thing is, is being able to stay focused for the duration of a fight because one split second that you don't have that focus, you're out, you know. And um, I'm sure if you're 100% focused all the time, Jamal Hill's probably not getting knocked out with that shot. You know, he's a little mm. bit more keen. He's circling. He's, he's, he's realizing it's coming. But – but that's how knockouts happen. It's probably one guy a little bit more focused on the other, and yeah. boom, that happens. 
there was talk of uh, Jamal, uh, Magomed, what am I saying? The CTE, ADD, whatever you want to call no, it. No, talk no, of bloody Alex. Yeah, no, I know that's what. Don't listen says. to Twitter, Bisbee. Yeah, thank God. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> talk of uh, Pereira fighting potentially in three weeks' time against Magomed Ankalaev. I don't think that's going to happen. Would you advise against that, Chris? Uh, man, I'll tell you, that's a tough fight. Uncle Ive is good, man. And he's, he's, I think he's the dark horse of that division. He's a really smart fighter. Um, and I think, I mean, I know he stays on the feet. He uses his jab, but I, I'm pretty sure he has wrestling too, right? I think he could wrestle. Big time. He's Dagestani. And, and Pereira taking that fight on three weeks. That's a, that's a tough undertaking. You know, I, I, if I was his coach, I'd be like, let's take a little time off. You know, before we have that fight, and maybe that's not the fight. I think that's probably the toughest fight for him. Um, who else is up there that he could fight? Is it just not Goliath I mean, at this point? Yeah, to be honest, the top five is beating them all. Jan Blahovic, okay. Yuri, who else? He just beat Jamal. Yeah, um, yeah. The only one is uh, yeah, Magomed Ankalaev, who, yeah. funnily enough, is by far the hardest challenge for him. Let me far. ask you a question. It, it's it's weird. It's 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 hard. It's hard for, and I saw Cormier say this too, and I and I agree. It's hard for me to get fully behind Pereira because I do see such a opening with the wrestling, and he hasn't really fought wrestlers who. I was going to this myself in a second. Yeah, oh my bad. You brought this up. No, you good. But no, it's no, like no. It, it's hard to deal. With. But I almost it's almost so crazy, and it's such a deficiency based on what we've seen so far. Um, it's almost like Ben Askren coming into the UFC and being able to just become a multiple time champion with no hands. Like it's like a striker yeah. looking at Ben Askren and thinking, how the hell is this guy the world champion? He was able to do it in Bellator. He was able to do it one at, uh, was it one FC or whatever yep. it was. I mean, the guy had an unbelievable MMA career and he had no striking at all. Like it looked, it looked awful, but he was so good at wrestling. He was able to do it. This guy is kind of the opposite. He's, I, I would almost say he's as bad as Askren is with wrestling uh, as Ben Askren is with striking. And this guy is may may go down as one of the best fighters of all time. Uh, it's just yeah. it's just weird. It is weird to see happen. So, I don't know if it's a I don't know if it's just the matchups or it's the evolution it's the of the sports. You think it's the no, matchups? No, it's 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 because like you know, Jesus Christ, I had to fight so many goddamn bloody wrestlers holding me down, pinning me down, frustrated, working hours on takedown defense and wall walking and shit. You know what I mean? Pereira rocks up and he's just swinging people and just knocking them out. Uh, <laughs> not that I had that kind of power, but you know. Yeah. So he comes to the UFC, Bruno Silva, Sean Strickland, Israel Adesanya twice. Jan Blahovic, who can wrestle a bit, but he's not a wrestler. He you only know, the only like, time I feel like I've seen him was against Adesanya, who he was way bigger yep. than him. he used. And then Giri and Jamal Hill. You know, so I yeah. think Martin Ankalaev is kryptonite for this guy because the man can wrestle at a high level. Yeah. Um, but it's weird. There's a little part of me, there's a little part of me that's jealous of his matchup. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, God of damn. his matchups before this Uncle Ivy fight, you're saying? The, of his matchups before a title fight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> had to no, fight I know. His wrestlers, Chael Sonnen, Richard Evans, Tim Kennedy. Do you know what I mean? Guys yeah. that can just grab a hold of you, pick you up, and slam you. You had to learn so much, and and the cardio you have to have to keep getting back up again, and know and like and a guy like you, it's like all right, if he takes me down, that's fine. I'm just going to keep getting back up again and hope that I'm, I stay in this guy's face, and he's going to be more tired than you. Pereira, I don't. He does not. I don't think he has that going for him. You know, I don't think he's going to be able to get up a thousand times like you were able to, and still have the cardio on the feet. We've seen him get tired and stuff before. Uh, I don't know. That that's that's the only thing the question mark in a lot of people's minds, and I think it'll always be there. Is like, all right, what if this guy fights a wrestler? So we'll, we'll the uncle I have not that he is a you know I don't and I know he's Dagestanian, but we've seen that other dude. Who's that uh, that dude who fought Bruno Silva? The one I the one I dude. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Magomed. Yeah. Jeez, Louise. Yeah, the Chris. pirate guy. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you're thick thin. bastard. You're That's thick what you're trying man. to say. That's the super, handsome. Yeah, handsome dude. Ha he looks handsome, like you, man. that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's scary looking Magomed, guy. Shut up, Padin. But he had. Like I don't think he, that guy for a Dagestanian. You don't. You, you know, we knew he had great striking, and just because he's from Dagestan, we just thought, okay, this guy has to know how to wrestle. And then Bruno Silva was out wrestling him in that fight like crazy. Yeah. Which he's not a wrestler. So Magomed can wrestle. Magomed can wrestle. Yeah. I heard he's really well rounded. 
Um, yeah, no, so, he is. He is. Yeah. Um, so this isn't this isn't an advert. I can, this is why I kind of wanted to get you on here. You hear me? People see me sitting here, and I'm doing this and everything. My neck's killing. I, yeah, I saw yeah. you at the way. Uh, so in uh, Atlantic City, you gave me some of this, and it really, really does help. And this is your product, Chris, that yeah. you've launched, and that's why I was like. Dude, I would love you to come on the podcast because I'm all about supporting fighters' endeavors outside of the octagon. Um, so tell me about this, Trinity Gold. Yeah, man. So about a year and a half ago or so, you know, I, well, I'll start with this. You know, I've had 30 surgeries. I've been to Medellin, Colombia twice for stem cells. I've been to Germany twice for Reginokine. That's almost like a PRP type thing. You know, Dana had done that yep. a bunch of times. He sent me out there. Um, I've had, I've been to all the top doctors in the United States, anything I could do legally, you know, obviously without taking steroids and stuff to make my body feel better. I'm, I'm all in. There's been companies sending me products basically my whole career because they would love for it to help me. And I could, you know, they could sponsor me and I could talk about it. It's helped me. And there's, you know, you know, a lot of those things like stem cells and things that they work. Um, but with my leg, man, I was, I was dealing with so much pain, even when I was done with, like, I was still rehabbing. And I was getting back into training and I set a fight. Every single time I get up on my toes and start bouncing, I would have this crazy pain in my leg. Like it, it just wouldn't go away. And it would just it would take the motivation out of the workouts. I was like, man, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. If this doesn't eventually get better, I don't know, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this anymore. And this guy from a Bible study group gave me an out of shape dude he goes chris I, because i had my podcast i was doing won't back down and i had a few doctors on that were on also that were on rogan's and and he goes listen i've been taking these pills this this indian doctor has been selling to one store for like i think it was like 12 years or something like that and him and his family have been taking it and it's changed their lives they feel so good but they just want to make sure they're not going to have like a heart attack or anything do you mind asking your doctor friends if this stuff like all the ingredients in it is okay so I was like, yeah. So I asked the doctor friends and they were like, no, no, it's all like food product. You're fine. He had given me a bag and I just left it on my bathroom counter. I was just, I wasn't like anything all natural. There's no way it's going to just make me feel better. Like in my mind, you know, I have right before that, I had some like new company that the UFC was trying to get to sponsor me. Uh, they were going to actually sponsor the UFC. It was this new, like, it was almost like a peptide cream uh, that NFL athletes were using. Um, now, you know, you can't take peptides now, but I think at the time you may have been able to. And, I'm very uh, dubious about creams as well. So I, that, it did nothing for me, basically. I, yeah, I took it. I was creams. so excited. I spoke to the owner. He had me gassed up. I was so excited to take it. I put it on my leg. Issues, right? I ended up taking these pills, these pills that the guy gave me, and I took it. I kind of forgot I took it. I went. I, I started working out. And I'm up on my toes. I'm starting to bounce, and the pain is gone. And I go, what the? I feel so good. I'm like, oh, my God, I took those pills. And so right away in my head, I'm like, no way. So I take it again and again. I'm like, I'm taking some right now. Yeah, hundred percent. Get them down. Take take four. Double dose it up. And let's go. Um, it, it made me feel so good. And and one thing that I've been like really into, and 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 like one thing that guys always reach out to me for in, in the MMA community, and also other athletes from you know other sports, they'll reach out to me because they know I've, I've had so many surgeries. Like, and I, I I'm always connected with the best doctors and all that stuff just from being in the UFC for so long. And so I'm always asked questions. Hey, you know, like Bisbing has a neck, you know, issue. Like, what doctor did you go see to get your artificial? You know, if you're going to get an artif artificial disc replacement, like I'm going to try to help you. I got great doctors. Yeah. I've had the artificial disc replacements. I had a disectomy in my neck too. So whatever I can do to help dudes. And so when I took this, I go, holy shit, we need to get this to the world. Like people need this. Like I have to be careful what I say, but like stuff that people are taking every single day, different, you know, painkillers and different things like that, uh, anti-inflammatory things. They're, not, they're terrible for you. You know, it's not good for your stomach. And the liver. The liver. Terrible just for the terrible for everything. And this is a food product. And the reason why it works, because good luck trying to reverse engineer it. it the active ingredients are from one area in, in India where, like, the weather's perfect. And the doctor that I'm working with throws out 70% of the raw materials if the active ingredient is in 100% pure. Like, you get, like, millions of pounds of ashwagandha shipped to your house right now get a great deal on it and you can start taking it. But I guarantee you, it's just, it's, it's the active ingredient isn't a hundred percent pure. So you're not going to get the results like you'll get from something like this and everything mm -hmm. that this guy does. Like we have, I have a collagen coming out now is so pure within three weeks. I you feel a huge difference. This is something you feel immediately. So I was like, this is the first product we have to go, get out there. I've had so much pain and inflammation. I got to get this out to people to help them out. I have all, all my family's, 
banged up with arthritis and different things like that. For the last year, I've had them on it and it's like changed everybody's life. So I'm happy. It took a lot. And uh, I was doing this all for the first time. I've never started a business before. I had no idea what I was doing, uh, but I had a passion for it. And here we are, man. We got to go and you go to trinitygoldnutrition.com to get it. And if you have pain, inflammation, if you're any anybody in your family has it, man, take it. And if it doesn't work for you, man, uh, just ship it back. We'll give you your money back. Like I, I'm not trying to take people's money if they if I don't feel like it if they don't feel like it works for them. I have no problem reimbursing. So yeah, and it's all basically because it, I looked at the uh, the ingredients. It's basically mushrooms. A lot of a lot of different kinds of mushrooms. And I think, and I'm starting to sound like Joe Rogan now. Number one, I know nothing about mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, Certainly yeah. not the psychedelic aspects either. You know, but it yeah. seems that there's a lot of powers that can be harnessed from mushrooms. A hundred percent. And this is there. This is just all natural. It's roots, herbs, shrubs. It's got mushrooms. It's, it's all, I've had this <laughs> stuff shipped to my house. I was grinding it up. Um, each one of those. Hold on, hold on. You, so you, you and your wife, you're grinding it up. You're sticking it in the packs. You got a little sweat job going in South Carolina. We right now I have the doctor doing the pills and I we put them in the bags and everything and we got a little sweatshop. My kids are working, they're getting paid. I got everybody nice. in the house working, you know. Maybe one day it gets big <laughs> enough and I'll have other people doing it. But for now, it's been great us doing it ourselves, actually. Um, but if you look up each one of those ingredients on its own, like there's so many benefits from each one of them, not just the pain and inflammation. It just helps in so many ways. Um, uh, yeah, like it, and the reviews I'm getting, man, I'm like, it's, it's this, this stuff is really helping people a lot. And mm. it's really cool to see. I'm ha- I'm just, if you know, I'm happy, you know, I'm going to be starting a bourbon here soon as well. That's not as, you know, that's not as uh, rewarding. I, no. I, I'm going to be happy to, you know, be able to get people some, you know, feeling good and everything. And it's good well, well, I can at least join in a conversation is, about that one. You know, I know. Yeah, about yeah, I'm mushrooms. sure, you know, I can, we, we can have a conversation about some good alcohol, though. A hundred percent. We'll do that the next time. One hundred percent. I look forward to it. Yeah. Well, I wish you all yeah. the best with that, Chris. I really do. So normally on this show, we have Harrington because you've agreed to stick around for a little bit. And I appreciate your time, Chris. Thank you yeah, very no much. Problem, all right. This episode is sponsored by Shopify.com. And Shopify is revolutionizing the world when it comes to your own business revolutionizing the world when it comes to getting online and it's helping out entrepreneurs, startups, all the rest of it, those kind of businesses get online, do it fast, do it cheap, do it without any stress or hassle. And it allows you online. You can sell all over the world. You can sell across all marketplaces like TikTok, social media, Facebook, Instagram, you name it. It's all there. It gives you a 24 seven business library. There's support every step of the way, 24 7, 365. Instantly will let you accept every single major payment method. And as I say, more importantly, it's really simple. So, whatever it is that you're thinking about, give it a try with Shopify. Whatever business you have already launched, get online with Shopify. If you have an idea and you want to get started and you want to give it a go, do it with Shopify because it is the easiest. It is the simplest and it is the most cost effective way to sell to the worldwide audience, right? The billions of people out there on the planet, of course, then you got to market to them and all the rest of it. But this allows you online taking payment messages, selling your goods to the whole world. And by the way, you can do all of this for just $1 per month with a trial period at shopify.com slash believe or lowercase shopify.com slash believe to take your business to the next level today shopify.com slash believe uh, harrington come on here i saw this story mm-hmm. a few good ones but the one in brazil uh yeah this one's interesting i don't even know if we can show the video for this one to be honest but a uh, a woman in brazil uh, she took her uncle, who had recently passed away, uh, in a wheelchair to the bank and tried to get him I to sign this. up for a loan. Uh, you saw this, Chris? I saw this, bro. Did you see the video? Oh, my she- God. Yeah, let's pull that up, please. <laughs> oh, my God. Yo, he's dead. He's dead. Was he actually confirmed dead? Was he can, really can, dead? can we get a sound, Brian? Yeah, I mean, it's in Portuguese. Yeah, I don't care. I want to hear, like, shock and awe. But carayo. Do you know, he kind of looks a little bit with it. I mean, he did a good job. So, just so anyone that still doesn't like follow, to be there. that guy died. 
She found out that he had equivalent to two and a half thousand dollars in his bank account. That's all it was. Wait, what? So rather I mean, than he had what? How much? Two and a half thousand dollars. Two and a half thousand dollars is what he had in his bank account. Twenty five hundred bucks. Remember though, this oh is Brazil, my gosh. and some places yeah. are in extreme poverty, so that could be a yeah. tremendous amount of money to some people. Um, rather than call the authorities, she's like, right. He's got $2,500 sitting in his bank account. He doesn't need it. Carajo, how do we get this money? Right, okay, <laughs> get him in the wheelchair. And Move then was like, my no. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's already dead. Yeah. Uh, I was like, you're not going to yeah. get away with it. He said, no, he will. Look, put a bit of blush on him, a bit of foundation, you know what I mean? Get him in the wheelchair. I tell you what, it's, it's a disgusting thing to do, and she should be ashamed of herself, but the balls on this lady... I kind of, I, I kind of admire, uh, you know, the, 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 <laughs> not the balls because that's weird, but you know what I'm saying. That's ballsy. That's that's. I mean, that's 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 crazy for you to walk into a place with it with you. It was an uncle you said or grand uncle. grandfather, uncle. uncle. I mean, that's dirty. What's going to happen to her? Is she getting? Is she getting put? Is she going to jail or something? She was arrested shortly after this for fraud. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That's I mean, as, that's as crazy as it gets, man. They, I, I mean, that's the first the first time I've ever seen anything like that before. Um, the video. That's the first time I've seen I, the video. That's that might become a thing. You know, like, all right. You don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to put me in your will. I'm just gonna wait till you die and and drag you to the bank in a wheelchair and just take your hand and 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 write your signature and and I just take all your money. Yeah, That's no, crazy. I mean, it's, it's shocking. It is. But uh, kind of on that note, uh, just recently, you know, because I'm 45 now, um, I feel like I'm getting old, bro. Uh, but I still feel good. I was on the bag this morning. Still this fucking got it. I might come back and have a little boxing match. I'm telling you. You stay I'm, active. You stay active with the with the cardio, right? And bag every work? Day. Every day, bag work, weights. Uh, run, bag work, weights. Uh, anyway, back to the point. Uh so I got health insurance just recently, you know. And, You're paying uh, for health insurance? So sorry, not health insurance, life insurance. What am I saying? Life got insurance. life insurance. Oh, okay, because okay, if I die, you know what I mean? Because I feel like I'm going to drop dead at some point. Um, yeah. So the family's taken care of, so they get a little bit of money. And at the same time, I tried to get Rebecca, my wife, to get some. And she freaked out. She's like, no way, no way. You are not having a life insurance policy on my head. I'm like, That's why hysterical. not? She's like, I feel, she said, I've seen forensic files. I've seen what people do. I'm like, babe, I'm the one with the big life insurance policy and you could kill me. Uh, no problem. Because if I kill yeah. you, they always look at the husband straight away, you know? A hundred percent. Yeah. She could get away with it. Just feed you a little bit too much bourbon, a little roofie or whatever. Push me down the stairs. Do. Yeah, you're good. Uh, Push me off yeah. the cliff. It the old man was beat up, man. His neck was hurting him. He just fell on he's, his neck. He died. He's got you know. one eye. He walked off a cliff. He didn't realize <laughs> the drop was down. <laughs> it was the wrong way. Uh, oh Harrison, my give, us, give us another one. Give us another one. What else have we got here? Oh, uh, OJ Simpson. Uh, yeah. So uh, obviously, you know, a, a guy known for memorabilia, uh, let's say with, with OJ, notably, that is what he served the jail time for. A piece of his memorabilia is now hold on, on hold sale. On. Hold on. Let's just start with a moment of silence for the great OJ Simpson. Mm. <laughs> the man was a murderer. <laughs> Yeah, but he 2,000 yards. Uh, how dare you take his, your hat off for that? <laughs> I know. The mom is a murderer, Harry. I'm being sarcastic. sarcastic. It's yeah. a bad hairline. I'm sorry to see it, Chris. Um, so uh, a piece of his memorabilia is now on sale. Probably the most famous item in his collection, the white Bronco uh, that he was in in a, a very low-speed chase down the, the California freeway, uh, interrupting a finals game, uh, NBA finals game. That truck is now on sale. It's looking like it's going to sell for $1.5 million dollars uh the week after his death well i feel like broncos have kind of gone up in value and and still to this day when i hear the word bronco i think of oj simpson that guy his family <laughs> deserves i guess some type of stake in the bronco business because broncos are everywhere right now and i still think they're of pretty cool simpson. though they are they the new cool ones cars. are sick 100 yeah. percent. and people like the old ones they like rebuild them and so uh yeah, I'm not surprised it's selling for that much, but you know, yeah. Are, are you a memorabilia fan? 
Not really. Yeah. My kids kind of my kids like it, you know. So I'll I'll get things signed from fighters and stuff just for them. But and they like the baseball cards and the football cards, so they're kind of into it. But yeah, I'm not. I've never been really into yeah. it. I never get anything signed. I mean, I could. I'm, I see fighters every week almost. Yeah. I'm, I me never, neither. ever do that. I might start a little yeah. business. Like behind me, there's that painting. And I feel like a douchebag, right? But that was painted by somebody else and they sent it to me. And behind that painting, there's a, like a big door in the wall. So this is where I was going to set it up. And that just covers it perfectly. So that's the only reason it's there. And, <laughs> and even still, sometimes like when I do a Zoom, like for a business call or whatever, you know, and this flashes up on that offer sake because they just think <laughs> wanker wanker's got pictures of himself in the yeah, background yeah. i got um, i got some too don't don't feel bad well you, yeah. you know you get the fan art what do you do with all the fan Correct. art yeah what do you do with that where, where do you have it well the, the top i don't have it on the walls i, I got yeah. sent a bunch from this guy in the uk he's very talented glk kl art i think shout out brother he would send me so many like these huge canvases that were so nice you can't throw them away and then i did used to have them on the wall a bit and then i was just like as i walked in i caught it one day i'm like anybody walking in here for the first time is gonna think wow this guy loves himself. So they're yeah. all piled up at one end of the house upstairs in the far like corner. There's about 30 of them. But you, you get the same thing, Chris? I got the same thing. And I have them all piled up all together too in uh, in like my utility room. You know, one day my kids maybe or somebody wants to sell it to make some money or whatever. Yeah. If, if it's worth anything, go ahead. But yeah, I'm not – I can't really put put them on the wall like that. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, don't get me wrong. Whoever sent me stuff like that, I'm extremely and eternally grateful, you know. Yeah, and my plan, because you know the posters that we sign? I have those. Friday. I have oh, those. Oh, you do? I have those up only because the first time, my first fight ever, I fought Alessio Sakara. This is 2011. And uh, I'm in the airport. And Brendan Schaub comes running up to me. He goes, why, man? You you forgot your poster. And he had my poster with him to give it to me. I go, I was I didn't even care about it. I didn't think it was anything. He goes, "Yo, this is signed by every single fighter on the UFC in the and on the on the card." He goes, "I take every one of these and I and I do a um what do they call it? Put it in the um frame in a frame. You put it in the frame yeah. and he puts it up on his wall. I'm like, "Shadow right, box." A good idea. Like a shadow yeah, like shadow box. These are it's more frames. I have do I do have something I, my gloves and my shorts and stuff when I knocked out Anderson, I have those in a shadow box. <sighs> But uh, other than that, I have uh, I just have all those those cards um, that I was on signed by all the fighters, and I have those in my basement. So even though I forgot my last one, I, I I don't have the last fight I was just on that poster I left in the hotel room. It was a I'm crazy sure night. we know a guy that can get you that poster. Do we know a guy? Right. I reckon we do. The guy that flew you on a private jet that you cried your eyes out like a little bitch to. I'm going to have to ask him for something. I'm going to have to ask him for something again. Jeez. Uh, See, that's the thing. I don't like to ask Dana for stuff either. And Harrington, our producer, keeps going on, get him on the podcast, get him on the podcast. It's like, dude, you know, I I don't want to be that guy. Um, For anyone that doesn't know, the posters is what we're talking about, and most people will. When we check in at the hotel, we sign all the posters, um, and we get four posters. Three of them are just event posters, blank, and the fourth, as you mentioned, is signed by all the fighters. I've still got them in the cardboard tubes, all piled up in a cupboard in the garage, garage. Um, if I had a nice wife, maybe she would take it upon herself to put it in a thing or whatever, but they're all that. And I think I've got them all, but I think I might've lost one or two along the way, but you open this cupboard and about 35, uh, you know, rolled up pieces of cardboard come flying out. And I always said, when I have a gym, when I open a gym one day, that's when I'll do it. And I'll put them up all over the gym. That's Uh, a good idea. Yeah. That's smart. Um, but you think you see, you see yourself <laughs> open up a gym one day? That's what I want to do. Eventually, yeah. eventually. I, I had this conversation yesterday. I would love because I enjoy, I do enjoy training people and I miss being in the gym more. I work out here at home, um, but it's not the same. I miss that environment. Yeah. But right now I'm still, I'm still doing me. I'm still chasing my life. I'm still trying to yeah. do some acting stuff and whatever, you know, I still, still got goals. And the commentating, do. you're 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 pretty damn busy with the commentating, traveling for Very. that and stuff like like to then also be worried about a gym. It's a lot. A- exactly. And like yeah. if you're training fighters, you're gonna be selfless. You're gonna be all in yeah. on them. So one 100%. day when I'm retired, when I'm living in North Carolina, I'm gonna open a little gym. I'm gonna be a little old drunken martial arts. 
dickhead training yeah. little kids all right this is what you need to do you yeah. know one of them not training but just telling them and shouting at them and giving them shit and hitting them with a bamboo stick um <laughs> <laughs> Do you live in South Carolina? I live in South Carolina, but it's right. I'm, are you flying to Charlotte, which is North Carolina? I'm like 15 minutes over the border in South Carolina. How is it? It's awesome, man. I love it. I love it. You know, like New York just kind of fell apart during COVID. Uh, it's just so expensive there. And the only reason I was there, man, all my family was there. I was born and raised there. So I never thought I was going to leave, but my family started leaving. And because my family left, I'm like, all right, I'm out of here. And um, I miss all the I miss the guys. I miss the team. Uh, I miss the ball busting because New Yorkers, you know, we could bust each other's balls and it's just no one gives a crap. Mm. You're not going to like no hurt feelings uh, out here. It's a little less like that. People are just really nice. There's way less like alpha male presence. You know, you're not getting like, yeah. you know, you know, dudes with a, a chip on their shoulder all the time running around trying to like, you know, should try to act like, you know, super tough. So it's it's nice, man. It's cheaper. Uh, people are really nice. Yeah, it's been yeah. good. Well, well, good. Well, good. I hope you MG, hope you. How long are you? Um, how long are you gonna be in California for? Well, 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 this is it. We don't know. We're not gonna stay here forever. There's a. Here's the thing. There's a. As you know, the country's gigantic, and we've always lived in Orange County, California, because of my career when we first came over, and the kids. Callum's 23 now. Ellie's 22. Lucas is 14. He'll be going off to high school in September. Few more years, he'll be at college, you know. Yeah. So we're just trying to think long term, where do we want to be? And we're doing a lot yeah. of research and North Carolina keeps coming up. I don't know if we're gonna go there. It might be what it's the weather is insane. I mean, you're from you're in Orange County, so weather is not like enticing yeah. for you, but I the weather is so nice. Uh and obviously it's just a simpler way of life. I, it's it's yeah. just way less stressful out here. You know, yeah. the traffic is easy, uh, just just an easier way of life. And that sounds inviting, especially yeah. as you're getting older. So we're not talking anytime soon. Harrington or Brian, did you see what happened with Macy Barber, Chris? No, I didn't see what happened. No, oh. before we start, Har look at the grin on Harrington's face. Harrington turns <laughs> into a creep anytime we mention Macy Barber. She is a respected like her, member huh? of the UFC roster, okay? And you, Harrington, have a daughter <laughs> and you have a girlfriend, <laughs> okay? So how dare you stop drooling <laughs> he loves talking about macy barber come on Harry. It, it's hard <laughs> not to drool over a woman like this in this video wow, which you're okay. about to see um and this is something that all the believers tagged me in being like oh i bet this makes it on tomorrow's show please get off my car get off my car no. what the hell is that my car Don't touch please. me because i could bust you in your Bust me in my face. I'd be Macy's talking fucking oh. asses, but I won't <laughs> do it. Really? Try. Listen, I want to be. Try. Phone. Disgusting. Thank you. Appreciate it. In your sweatpants and your. Why don't you dress better? Uh, Please get off my car. <laughs> anyway, it goes on. There was a better video. She basically, basically, the lady, the older lady's like, I will beat your ass and this, that, and the other. Macy's losing her shit, laughing her head off because <laughs> she was leaning on a car. I mean, come on. I kind of feel for that lady. She's clearly had a drink. She has no idea because, you know, the average girl in the street, if she's half your age, you don't think she's fighting in the UFC. Yeah. What the hell is she doing leaning on the car like she was seven foot tall? She got it. What, 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 what the hell was that? Harrington, do you have any more context for us, please? Seeing as I guarantee you have done a deep dive on this story. <laughs> I've tried. I've tried. All the uh, all, all the MMA outlets that have reported on it have given pretty much all the details that you saw in the video. Um, other than, yeah, I mean, it was it was Macy recording it and the woman saying, I will beat your ass. And Macy saying, please, please swing on me. Yeah. See what happens. Right. Oh, How about God. this? Should we have a public campaign to get Macy Barber on the show on Monday? We'll talk about it in depth. Chris, being... As you mentioned a moment ago, alpha males. Being an alpha male yourself, and I know you shouldn't say that about yourself, but, you know, it's cringe to say that, but it's true, yeah. let's be honest. A world champion in the UFC, you must have experienced what Macy went through there last night, but not because they don't know you, because they do know you. Yeah, honestly, not, not, not a lot, man. You've had people mess with you in bars and stuff, trying to really... Once, once or twice, the only thing I've had that I could think of that that's happened, and it was everybody knew me in the whole place because the it was it was in Vegas, 
I, I was being paid to be there. So I was like, you know, on a, a big table in the middle of everything. They kept announcing that I was there and everything. And the bouncer, I had to go to the bathroom. So the bouncers wanted to take me to the bathroom. This is like at Hakkasan or something. And I'm walking and the bouncers are kind of cleaning, you know, clearing up the area for me. So we're walking, walking. And some dude, like, it was like one line going one way, one line going the other. And he like popped his shoulder up and just banged me with his shoulder. And I turn, I stop, I turn around, I'm like, what the f-? And the kids, like, he's like smiling. And he kept walking. And I'm like, he just did that to say that he shoulder bumped me. Like, it was just like his thing to get off. So he go go tell his buddies that, oh, I just shoulder bumped Weidman. Other than that, it's, I really haven't had too many people try to fight me. Um, yeah. Out, no, no, no. To be honest. Thank to God. be honest, I misspoke. Because what, what I find generally, any so-called tough guys, they're very respectful. You know, like guys, security at clubs and stuff like that, or whatever. They, they just want to come over, shake your hand and be respectful. It's always just little drunk punks that yeah, don't yeah. know who you are. You know, I used to get that a little bit. Like I was in a club in Manchester once and the manager came over. I don't, Yeah, and they did know who I was. But these these were like young, young, gun-toting shitbags. Yeah, and they were like, Mike, it doesn't matter how tough you are. Yeah. They're, they're, they're going to have guns on them and that's yeah. what they want to do. And they want to shoot you. And, you know, so I left and then apparently they f- trashed the club afterwards because really? they, they let me go out the f- back, you know, I was like, all right, I'll go. And then the club apparently got smashed up. I don't know. Yeah. So Macy Barber, Macy Barber, good old Macy. We'll try and get her on yeah. Monday, Harrington. Uh, Harrington, yeah, yeah. Chris but is just to go, go off that. Like, I feel like you're right. Most people, most guys that are tough guys, they probably know who we are and they know there's like levels to the game. They're not trying to, you know, they just have respect for us. It's the, uh, it's, I, I think you're right. It's just really the only people that you have to ever, ever have to worry about really is like just people who are super drunk and they're idiots mm-hmm. and they don't really know who you are. All right, this episode is sponsored by Chalk. That is C-H-O-Q.com, Chalk.com. And they offer and they specialize in all natural testosterone boosters and more importantly testosterone boosters that work when you get into your 30s your 40s and of course beyond there your testosterone is dipping and your muscle mass is dipping certainly by one percent every single year and as your testosterone levels dip your energy goes your mood goes your manhood goes and you're literally losing what makes you a man so you want to replace it but you want to do it in a natural way Supplement industry, full of garbage. A lot of crap out there, a lot of stuff that doesn't work. There's a lot of chemicals that you'll be putting in your body. So Chalk specializes in testosterone boosters. That work that is done in a natural fashion. By the way, Chalk Daily is the cleanest research-based testosterone booster available. And along with Chalk Daily, check out their male vitality stack and the stack ultra. And here we go. 35% off if you want it. When you go to chalk.com and you use the code Bisping at checkout, you will get 35% off the entire order. Listen, you know, you want to get, uh, you want to get swole for the summer. You want to look good. You want to feel good. You want to take care of business in the bedroom. Get the testosterone boosted. Do it in a natural way. Don't take risks. Don't put crap in your body, but feel good. Feel great. Look great. Lose weight. Beef up. You know, muscle up. Get down the beach. Impress everybody. And do it with 35% off. Go to chalk.com, C-H-O-Q.com. The code is Bisping for 35% off. What was the young Chris like? I'll tell you. A, I'll tell you a fun story. So the last time I was in a street fight, it was me and John Volante. I know you know Volante. Oh right? come on! It so had this, to a, be. this is a this is a funny story. So we're in this club, and now he might have just been in Strike Force. I wasn't in the UFC yet. I was trying to get in there. I might have been like four and zero pro. And uh, we're in this club, and these and Volante hates like bullies, you know, like or anybody who thinks they're tough. He can't ha- he can't handle it at all. He can't look the other way. So we're in this club and one of our buddies had some money. So we had a table. We're, you know, feeling ourselves, dancing, whatever. And you see these three juice heads walk in and they got the gold chains, big old fat gold chains and everything. You got one was like a monster. He was like six foot four, probably like 280 pounds, just fully juiced up. And then he had two little, little small juice heads that were like kind of following him around. And they're walking through and they're like shoulder bumping people, like just eyeing people up. Like they're just acting super tough. And as they walk past our table, Volante sees this dude and he he pointed them out to me as they were pushing through people and being dicks. He was like, yo, watch this. And the kids, they walk by us and they're just going to walk by. And he 
he uh, he sees the dude and he slaps the biggest dude on his ass. <laughs> He's like, loosen up, buddy. Just loosen up. Why are you acting so tough? Relax. And the dude was so taken back. He was like, what the? Like, and he's way bigger than Volante, too. And Volante is a big dude. And they were just so confused. They just kept walking. But I guess throughout the night, I could see they're kind of like staring at us. They're kind of waiting around. I didn't, you know, I was still having a good time. I wasn't worried about it. But as the time, as the end of the night came, Volante's outside. I'm inside. And someone runs up to me and they're like, yo, why been Volante's about to get into a fight. So I run outside and Volante is talking shit to these dudes. They got their Mercedes Benz parked out front and they're all in their car. And then, and Volante's just like near their window talking back and forth. The dude's like, let's go around the block and fight. And Volante's like, all right, but it's cold. Can you give me a ride? And he starts to open up their back door. He's like, come on, give me a ride. Let's go. I'm not walking that far. It was hysterical. So I don't say shit. And Volante's way more intimidating looking than me, even though I'll beat his ass. So I'm, I'm right by the window. I say something. I'm like, yo, just because you're a juice head doesn't mean you're tough or whatever. I said something stupid like that. And the ju- the big old juice head who was driving, he gets out of the car. He f- nothing, no, doesn't even look at Volante. Comes straight from me. I'm like, all right, here we go. And big right hand comes just like you expect. I just did a cover, underhook, knee pick, pulled him down. And I just start slapping his belly. And I'm slapping his belly. I'm like slap, slapping his bald head. I'm just embarrassing him. So the bouncers come in. They break us up. And now he's like, full, he's so mad. He's like, I want back at him. Give me another chance. Blah, blah. He wants to fight me again. So they let him go. And it was like instant replay again. I just underhook, <laughs> blocked the punch, underhook, knee pick. And I start slapping his belly, tickling him, just noogies. And that was it. And then Volante just, he still does nothing. He always is, he's the biggest shit starter, but he won't do anything. And I'm like more like, all right, you disrespected my friends. Are we going to fight? Like, is that what we're doing? Uh, yeah. So we're kind of bad mix. And then uh, I just, those guys got in their car and left. But that was the last time That's, I was in a street fight. Uh, no punches thrown. Nobody got hurt. But it was like, I just embarrassed the hell out of them. Yeah. 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 I, I, and that's the beauty, isn't it, of knowing martial arts. You know, like knowing jujitsu, being a wrestler, that you don't have to listen. Come on, we've all had a fight and we've, we have all, all thrown punches. Of course, we have. I used to yeah. get in a lot of fights when I was a kid, but I'm not a kid yeah. anymore. Thank God. Yeah. But when you have the ability, you know, you don't have to lose your shit. You can just take them down like you did and just embarrass them and yeah, then yeah. not lower yourself to rolling around on the streets and all the rest of it. Like I got assaulted when I went, I, I don't think I've talked about this. So I got sucker punched. Not in New Orleans. I have talked about that when I was back home recently. Some really? Drunk dudes. Yeah, yeah. Some dickhead sucker punched me. And he, and he fell. Are you in a bar floor. at this point? I'm in a beautiful restaurant with. Uh... So I go home. It's the last time I was there. I go home, go to this nice restaurant, family restaurant. It's a summer's night. Uh, there's my mom. She's like oh, 80. She's on crutches. She can't walk. There's my sister with a newborn baby, her family. There's my children. There's like 22 of us. Very, very respectable. It's 5.30 at night. No one's had a drop of alcohol. The sun's shining. It's a nice family Italian restaurant. We're sitting there. We're just putting our order in for appetizers and shit. And these guys walk in and they're hammered and one of them's talking a bit of shit he thought he, I, I don't remember him at all but apparently we ran into each other in 1996 Jeez. okay yeah, yeah yeah and obviously that's been stewing in his mind whatever so he started I, I, talking a bit of shit i said yo you, you you need to go and sit down i said look i'm with my mother and stuff like that i don't know who the hell you are so he sits down and he's all night long he's doing this and whatnot so i say to the manager yo can we get rid of this guy and there was three of them they're all like they were like 60 years old like old drunk losers you know like really i'm thinking the guy's like your age this guy's no no this is when i was a kid apparently we had like an interaction or something you know what i mean so these old drunk losers i said yo can we get rid of these he goes yeah absolutely so the manager gets them to leave Fast forward two hours later, we're paying the check, we're leaving the restaurant, and we're standing there. And and the, where you pay is by the exit of the of the um, uh, the restaurant. So my mom and all the family are sitting down. I'm paying the check because I always pay the check. <laughs> or they finish that wine and the dessert, you know. And then they walk past again and they start talking shit. And I'm like, what the f- you are? So I said I'm with my family. We're sitting down, and as I'm talking to one of them, the other guy just goes, boom. And punches me right square on the nose, right? Wasn't a hard punch, but it was a decent little shot. You know, it it was good enough. It registered. Uh, But he fell on the floor because he was hammered. As he he connected, he fell on the floor. (laughs) And I'm standing there. 
No, but I'm like, because when I was younger, I did used to get into a lot of fights. Uh, and I was known for that. And I'm, I'm, I've grown into a much different person. Now, I am not that guy. I'm not a fighter. I mean, I am a fighter in that sense, but I'm not that guy. I'm not a scrapper. I'm not a dickhead. I don't cause yeah. drama, you know? Uh, and I thought, I just can't allow myself to come back. I haven't been here in a long time because it'll be the talk of the town because it's only a small town. Oh, Michael Bisping was back. He was only here two days and already he's rolling around the streets fighting somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I was just like, you, because he hit me and he falls on the floor. And I was like, I could f all three of you up right now. Look, you can't even stand. You know, yeah. my nose was bleeding a little bit. He bust my nose a little bit. And then right as I'm just like looking at him, like thinking, you prick, it's just not worth it. Don't do it. Uh, an off-duty police officer walks out of the store across the road. And she's like, I saw everything. I saw everything. Uh, Michael, she knew me because it's a small town and everyone knows me. They're like, Michael, we saw everything. Please press charges. I'm like, no, we're not pressing charges. She, goes, she says, Michael, they do this every week. They're always causing trouble. Please press charges. I'm like, do you really think I'm going to come back and press charges because the bum sucker punched me? Yeah. So anyway, my wife was like, I'm really proud of you, Michael. You did the right thing. You did the right thing. And I'm like, yeah, my mom's like, Michael, oh, you've, that's so good. You know, you were so mature and everything. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I am. Anyway, I get back home and I'm sitting there and I'm like, <laughs> little, yeah. right? Yeah. And I'm like, so now my only regret, I wish I didn't, I'm glad I didn't hit it. Yeah. But I should have leg kicked it. Yeah. I should have leg kicked it really <laughs> hard. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because the bastard wouldn't have walked for about a week. Yeah, bro. That is amazing. Thank you. It's amazing how much restraint you have now. Like that is, that's, that's hard. It's way easier to beat the shit out of that dude. For you to, oh, yeah. for you to pull back and not do that. That is a testament to definitely you changed. I had it not to, I know we, I don't I know how much time we have, but I have a similar Please. thing because I don't, I'm the same way, man. Like I, I grew up fighting and stuff too. And if I was always taught, like if someone disrespects you, if, if, especially if they touch you, like you're allowed to, you're, you're allowed to go. And now just recently I was with my parents and we're in the car and this jerk off dirt bag, you know, shitty Honda civic all souped up cuts in front of my dad as he's driving. And I was, I was sitting in the passenger seat and uh, cuts in front of us and slams on the brakes. And now he's going like five, five miles per hour and we can't go around them. It's a one lane. And it's like, what the, Next thing I know, it separates the two lanes, and we're stopped at a light. And the guy is blowing me kisses from his window, and he's got his window down. He's leaned all the way back. He's like, and I, everything in me, like, I want to beat the shit out of this dude. Like, I want to go, like, I, I, can't, I can't let this guy do this in front of my family and everything. But in my head, it's like, all right, this guy, it, it, the knife, gun, it, I'm with my family. This is stupid. I have to kind of, like, just eat this. But just like you said, I went home, and probably for about – a week or so i couldn't stop thinking about it like he got away with it like i wish i wish i would have done this and i wish i would have done that but you know what like nobody got hurt nothing crazy happened I and mean, nobody went to jail i'm happy exactly yeah exactly because it's not worth it that's all i think number one if it did start Typically in the UK, when people show up, when the cops show up, granted there was an unmarked uh, off-duty officer there, but whoever is the winner is usually the one going to prison. That's yeah. how it was for me when I was a yeah. kid. Yeah. Um, and then I'm like, I've got a good life. You know, could you imagine this front page of the newspapers, yeah. all the MMA sites will pick it up. Michael Bisping arrested. I'm like, I'm a UFC commentator. I'm 45 years old. I'm a retired yeah. fighter. Yeah. I am not. I am not doing this, yeah. but it was hard. It's it hard. Was, it, After it's everything we awful. like, everyone wants to be like us. So when those situations, they could put someone in their place. And then when you become to the level where, you know, you could freaking just dominate these dudes, you don't do it. You know, cause it's crazy, isn't it, Chris? Cause when I was younger, my mom had an expression, which I thought she was crazy. Cause when I was a kid, I was, I was always getting into fights. I'm talking 15, 16, 17. I, were you oh, the younger, you were younger brother or older brother? I had two older brothers. Two older brothers, okay. I got a younger brother as well, but I was, yeah, they used to kick the shit out of me, you know. So I was yeah. used to an ass beating. But my mom used to always say, Michael, it takes a bigger man to walk away. And I used to go, oh, my God, mom, what are you talking about? You're out of your mind. Yeah. What do you mean it takes a bigger man to walk away? But, geez, as you get older, you realize, absolutely true, because they were scumbags. And Brian, just jump on. Brian will tell you, they've sent videos in to this podcast or like 
you know, talking shit and like little DMs, right, Brian? Oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I mean, we were, they must we be gonna... such losers that they're they're hitting yeah. up your podcast people to try to get to you, like like they, they they're trying oh, yeah. to get to your level. You would have sunk down to their level if you beat the shit out of them. Yeah, you know? no, and I know. Because it's like, yeah, yes. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're good. Because um, yeah, there's like that's their claim to fame. And I promised, I said to Brian, I said, no, we're not talking about this. We're not even giving them the airtime. But I think other people listening to this, they, they, you know, can help inspire people that if you are that guy, as you're getting older, you don't need to be. We can always change. Um, Chris, you are the man. I, I believe Harrington has a couple of fan questions for you, if you don't mind. Let's go. Harrington? Harrington? <laughs> Harrington? <laughs> there it is. Took me a second to get to the button. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so uh, BJ Jotter uh, has a question. How do you? How did you feel about the production and arena in Atlantic City? Does he think there is a bright future for more fights in Atlantic City? Yeah, uh, that Atlantic City. You know, that's where I started my career, so it was awesome being back. But that city has kind of really fell apart, um, and it was good to be back. And I didn't know what to expect with the arena. Uh, but that is that is a cool arena. The way there's not one bad seat in there. It's historic. It's almost a hundred years old. Um, I think it was a Toro Gotti who kind of like made that place his home and, and made it famous. And so there's been a lot of history there. And you know, from my walkout to the to, to the fight, you know, during the fight and when I was leaving, the energy in there was just unbelievable. And uh, yeah, I I hope Atlantic City gets more fights. Yeah, you're right. It is a little rundown, though. And we don't want to talk shit on Atlantic City because I did that a few weeks ago. Yeah. But they're lovely people. Yeah, lovely people. But most of them don't live there. They're like outside, you know, they're, they're, they're coming in just for the spectacle. <laughs> uh, that place has really fell apart. You know, I, I started my fight career there in 2009. And then uh, when I was there, it wasn't that bad. You know, a lot of people were still going there and it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. And then Hurricane Sandy happened in 2012. A bunch of the casinos got flooded. I think they went bankrupt. They, it really fell apart after that. And then when COVID happened, it went to a different level. Now, mm. I didn't feel safe driving my car down the side streets. I had my family with me. I go, I'm not even comfortable stopping at these red lights on some of these streets. It just really? looked like someone was going to carjack me. Yeah, it was, the, the dudes were just walking around up to no good. Uh, so, mm. yeah, that city definitely needs some loving. Um, okay, I got uh, Corey Miller. Uh, this Can we have, I- Hold on, hold on. Can we have a question about Chris? as opposed to trying to get him to shit on Atlantic City yeah, or yeah. pick up the venue. Something about Chris, his personal okay. life. Come on. You're the master of questions, Harrington. <laughs> All right. Well, I thought this was super interesting. Not about his personal life, but fighting. But uh, it's a it's a running theme on this show. Anthony Smith says it all the time. Uh, you're the best fighter that he's ever trained with, and he doesn't understand how you've ever lost a fight. Uh, Michael's question is, is there a block going into the fights? Is it just unlucky, injuries, or something else? Eh, I mean, you know shit happens in fighting. That's, that's, that's probably it. You know, I think I've had some fights where I underperformed for sure, but a lot of fights I lost, I was winning and, you know, I guess attention span is probably a part of it, you know? Um, but either way, it's just like, was the other fighters day? You know, I, you know, yeah. So I appreciate Anthony Smith saying that I do feel like skill set wise, I got a great skill set. I'm still doing really good in the gym against top guys. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I do think I have a lot of potential. So I, I, that's why I'm still fighting. You know, I wouldn't be fighting if I didn't feel like I have a lot of potential and, and some more to show. So my goal every time is to be able to show like my potential out there. And sometimes it, it doesn't happen. Well, just so you know, Anthony does say that all the time. Really? He speaks so highly. No, I'm telling you, Chris, he really does. I'm just bringing up your Wikipedia because they, dude, are we forgetting that you were champion of the world? Are we forgetting <laughs> that you beat Anderson Silva when he was fit and he was in his prime? You know, are we forgetting you defended the belt three times? You know, you very, very humble of you to say. The reality is, you know, not everyone, you can't stay on top forever, but yeah. you still feel like you got another run in you. Is that the plan? Are you looking at a belt again or a few more know. fights? I'm going to take it a fight at a time. You know, like if I go against a big name guy and it somehow catapults me to a, a title fight at some point, you know, that would be obviously amazing because, listen, that's where all the money's at, right? Become a champ, then you get pay-per-view. We'll see. We'll see where, I'm, you know, I'm just going to take one fight at a time. Chasing the belt at this point, uh, I think would be a little crazy. I, I mean, as far as like that's my goal, uh, I, I just got to take a fight at a time, be my best version, and we'll see where it takes me. You know, I'm almost, but, I'm going to be 40 here pretty soon, you know, so. Yeah, but, 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 but it, 
is it crazy? Listen, Israel Adesanya was tremendous, but there's the parallels with Pereira about the wrestling, as we said. You know, your biggest skill set was your wrestling. Your jiu-jitsu is phenomenal, powerful on the feet. I mean, Sean, Sean Strickland, not the best wrestler, right? He's not a wrestler. Who else? Drickis Duplessis. What's your thoughts on Drickis Duplessis? I mean, I got more respect for him after his last fight than I had uh, prior to that. Like, I just thought he looked, you know, just like what everybody sees. He looked sloppy. But the the sloppiness and the unorthodox style that he has, I think, is what makes him good. Uh, he's just hard to predict, and I don't think he knows what he's doing half the time. And that it's it's hard to it's hard to deal with that. You know, when you, a guy's blitzing forward, you know, maybe like two three punches, but he just keeps coming. You know, and it, it could look spazzy, but I think the best thing about him is he doesn't care what he looks like. He doesn't care about the criticism, and I and I say that's probably the best thing about him. He does. You know, after some fights, if I don't look, if if I did something that wasn't great, and the fans are all saying that, you know, that's something I should change up. Sometimes it will get in my head, like, all right, I got to make a switch. I talked to him, you know, before his last fight, and uh, none of that stuff bothers him. He's gonna be him. He thinks it's the best style for MMA, even though it looks awkward, and so it's working for him. I mean, of course, I think I could beat all. I think I could beat all these guys. There's a lot of great matchups for me, um, but you know, just you gotta go in there and do it. Well, Chris, not that I'm kissing your ass because I don't need to, but so you were the champion. You fight Luke Rockhold in a fight you were winning until you threw that spinning back kick, right, which you probably fucking yeah. hate. Yeah. Yoel Romero, again, there's a storyline there, yeah. okay? And by the way, that was Yoel's a monster. Gagon Musasi, was it the whole thing touching the fence, uh, touching the canvas? So that was a that was a that was a weird one, man. So I had my I had both hands down, but they as he picked me up. So at, in New York, it was the first time they had an event where it had to be palms down on the floor, both palms, in in order to be a down opponent. And he had both my arms trapped, like uh, like not in a front headlight, but like over both arms. So my arms were like straight. And so I had him on the ground, but when he need me, my he like pulled up my head, which was smart, and my fingertips were on the ground. The ref, I think it was Big John McCarthy, I'm pretty sure, or Big Dan, I forget, but he uh, he thought it was I was a down opponent, so they stopped the fight. They they start giving me time, and then they go back to the replay, and they realize that my hands weren't down, and they because I had so much time off, they just I lost the fight. It was it was over. Wow. Yeah, so it was it was a weird one, and it was New York. You know, New York was just getting going with the commission, MMA commission. Hey, what? I got two. What dogs kind of dog is he, Chris? I got a golden doodle and a uh, cavapoo. <laughs> <laughs> the alpha male dogs, man. I was gonna say, can we see? Can we see? Because I'm a dog man myself. Oh, look at this guy, this is a, this is a puppy, right? Rebecca. Get Harry. Oh yeah, this is, this, <laughs> I've got one. Case. Hey, bring Harry here, please. Somebody. What, what, what is Harry? What kind of dog? I was uh, a York. Uh, what is he? Hold on. Yorkie poo. I think he's a Yorkie poo. Yeah, yeah. We got the Cavapoo. You got the Yorkie poo. This is what the champions. <laughs> okay. The champions need dogs like hey, exactly. We don't need a big macho Rottweiler. No, We're, no. You just, the, the poo spinoffs. They make great pets. All of them. No shedding. The hypoallergenic. So smart too. Smart. I mean, I this one, make, very, come here, come here. Very oh. timid. Get Harry. This one is. Wait, this one look, is come like. Come here, come here, come here. This is. This is. No, 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 no. This is why. This is why. Bring him in. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi to Chris Weidman. Hi, they might be brothers. Hey, how you doing? We're having a poo off. Yeah, look at that. They're actually identical. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these guys. Aww. Say hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> we are the. <laughs> Look at that, Harry. It's your people. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Go on. Go on, Harry. Get out of here. You stole my bloody headphones. You stole my bloody headphones. They're great dogs, great though. Dogs. I don't know if you hear they me. They really now. are. You really are. Hold on. Let me put my headphones back in. Harry just pulled them out. Little shit. Uh, right, Chris. We'll let you go, man, because we've kept you for far too long. Um, thank you for everything. Thank you for your time. Trinity Gold, what's the website again? TrinityGoldNutrition.com. There it is, TrinityGoldNutrition.com. The All-American Chris yeah. Wyman, the former champion, all-around legend. Thank you for your time, because this was great. I'd love to yeah. do this again thank sometime. You. I was, thank you. I, hey, listen, I got so much respect for you, um, and uh, I appreciate you having me on. Anytime that you want to do something, let me know. I'm in. Will do, will do, because I regularly need co-hosts and stuff. So, <laughs> Chris, you take care, buddy. All right, so, Chris Wyman, what an absolute legend that man is. Thank you for your time, Chris, if you're watching this back. Thank you, and support Trinity Gold as well. If you're going through some problems, give it a shout, give it a look. You won't regret it. Uh, Harrington, 
what is going on in the world of mixed martial arts. So I think the biggest story uh, is probably Ilya Teporia. Uh, he he amended his uh, his kind of outlook a little bit. Uh, he said uh, immediately after the fight, Max Holloway's next. It's 100% Max Holloway. That's who it's going to be. Now he's saying uh, that if Max Holloway doesn't put the BMF title on the line, uh, he has no interest in that fight, and he's going to skip him, go right to the Volkanovski rematch. Mm, well, first of all, he was very dismissive of... Uh, Max and oh. Justin, right? He, he said, that's all I saw the, the last 10 seconds. He said, I, I, he felt that that's what the entire fight look, look, looks like, which it didn't, which we know. So he's dismissing Max, of course. You know, that's what you do, I guess. You don't sit there and give a raving review. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. He's the type of guy that doesn't. Um, I thought Max had a lot of strategy and I thought he was phenomenal. The footwork was brilliant. Um, but regarding what you just said, I would be surprised if every time Max fights, shouldn't the BMF belt automatically be on the line? Because it's not a title fight. Right, but wait, so you're saying it should be or it shouldn't be? So Justin Gage's last fight was against Dustin Poirier. His next yes. one, the BMF belt was on the line. Mm -hmm. Vidal, how did he lose the BMF? He didn't. Uh, he retired with it. He fought... Usman, I think two uh, two times mm. after, and Gilbert Burns, and it was not on the line for any of those. Right, fights. right, interesting, interesting. I understand why Taporia would say that because that's worth getting. You know, the BMF belt. I mean, the more I think about it, because there was a lot of stigma attached to the BMF belt. A lot of people saying, "Oh, this is a stupid made up belt." But now, like we're getting a little deeper into the history of the BMF belt, and certainly with that fight, the way that it went down. And what these fighters represent, Justin Gagey, of course, one of them, uh, Masvidal, of course. These are guys, Nate Diaz, another guy that fought for the inaugural one. You know, they're fighters, fighters. They're fighters that fighters aspire to be like. They're performances that fighters want to be involved with. So, of course, I think now the BMF belt from the public and from fighters is getting a lot more respect, which which yeah, I believe it should. I like it now. You know, I was kind of like, well, it's fun, but I wasn't blown away by the concept. But I thought it's fun. All right, I had no issue with it. But now I'm like, hold on a minute. That now it stands for something. Now it means something, and that shows because Tapodia wants that belt. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like it. I can't imagine that Max Holloway would say no to that for a chance to fight at 145 to become the champion at featherweight. I'm sure they could put. So that would be a double title fight for both men. Never seen that before. We have never seen a, a <laughs> championship belt, an undisputed belt, and the BMF belt on the line at the same time. I mean, that is history in the making. Yeah, Ilya Teporia could get, in, conceivably, in his next fight, he could get that image that, you know, so many fighters, you know, the belt on each shoulder and celebrating the whole thing. Yeah. Like, he could have that. This And yeah, Max Holloway. Yeah. Well, of course, Conor McGregor's out there. He probably wants a shot at that BMF belt as well if he gets through Michael Chandler. What was Michael Chandler saying this week? Uh, so he went on, uh, he went, he was talking to the Mac Life and the MMA Hour uh, earlier this week, and he said uh, he wouldn't be surprised if when the the actual contracts came through and everything was was finalized on the dotted line, uh, that him and McGregor wouldn't be fighting at 170, rather for the inaugural 165-pound title. Uh, he said mm. this fight deserves a title, uh, and let's just see if we can we can get make that happen. I must admit, fight week last week, UFC 300 at the press conference, I was waiting for you know a McGregor announcement. I was waiting for Chandler and McGregor to come out on stage afterwards. I thought Dana was going to say, "Guys, wait there, we have a special announcement for you," and then they were going to come out. Of course, that didn't happen, but I had a sneaky feeling that if they did, they were going to announce. 165 pound belt and i said it to adam and nick the guys from tnt sports who you know very well and uh they were like oh they're, they're the best um and they said well hold on a minute but there's a 170 pound belt so that would diminish from the welterweight title unless they moved the welterweight belt up to 175 which is just not going to happen you can't take leon's belt and automatically make it 175 pounds you can't you can't do that why why not if you're changing the definition of the welterweight weight class he's still the welterweight champion and junior welterweight or super heavyweight whatever the 165 is called becomes a new class but is there the depth of talent for a 165 pound weight class and a 170 pound weight class that's the real issue you know 
I don't know about 170, but 175, I, I think for sure, because you could get some some you know uh, middleweights who could cut the 10 pounds, maybe not the 15. Um, mm. And there's certainly enough talent at, at 155 to support you know, 165 pound division. So I, I don't think welterweight would suffer all that much. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm all for 10 pound increments without question. 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, even a 95 and a 205. However, I do think though, with there already being a, an established welterweight champion at 170 pounds, I just think it makes it very, very complicated. You would essentially be asking Leon to relinquish that belt and then fight for the 175 pound belt in his next fight. Yeah. I mean, you I'll, know, I, 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 that, that, and that's just a big ask. Brian, as the third man in the room, what do you think? Because I think. I don't know. I mean, it's not my organization and who knows, maybe if this is going to happen, which I don't think it will, but if it is happening, I guess all it is is a conversation with Leon to see if he'd agree to that. Got to remember, that's a highly coveted belt that people, most people don't get. Brian. Yeah, I think if you if you were going to move uh, divisions around, you'd have to let Leon keep his belt, right? So, yeah, I, I mean... It would definitely change the landscape of those three divisions for sure. The like they the yeah. t there wouldn't be traffic jams at the top like there is now. Yeah, no. The, the more weight classes, the better. I yeah. think ten pound increments is perfect because two hundred five to one eighty five. That's the biggest in all the sport, and I did that, and it drove me crazy, and it pissed me off. I was 25, 35, 45, 55. I'm like, you little bastards, <laughs> you little bastards. You've only got to do ten pounds. Why have I got to do twenty? All right, this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp, which offers professional therapy done online and, more importantly, done at your convenience. I say it all the time, this is a fantastic service that you really need to take care of or, or take advantage of, should I say. If you have, you know, any kind of mental health condition, if you have a bad temper, if you've got a substance abuse issue, if you're drinking too much, if uh, you're struggling with your relationship, or, you know, whatever the case may be, speaking to somebody, a professional that knows what they're talking about, even just speaking to anybody, speaking to anybody will will help. But speaking to a professional will definitely help. And that's why BetterHelp is so good because as you probably know by now, it's all done uh, securely online. They, you just sign up. They match you to a licensed professional therapist very, very easily. You just schedule the calls at your convenience. If you're not vibing or gelling with the therapist, then you can change it at any time, and they will help you become the better version of yourself, the best version of yourself. So as I say, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. You just fill out a brief questionnaire. You get matched up really quick, and there you go. You're off to the races to become the best version of yourself. And that sounds cheesy. Oh, be the best version of yourself. What's wrong with wanting to be the best version of yourself? And I've been saying this lately, but it's true. You owe it to yourself, but you owe it to your loved ones. You do. You owe it to your wife and you owe it to your children. You owe it to your friends. But more importantly, you owe it to yourself, right? We have all these internal problems going on between our mind that are holding us back, holding us back in work, in our relationships, in our personal life, in our professional life as well. You know, these things that go on between your mind, it's affecting everything. And maybe it's affecting you on a very obvious level, maybe in terms of your health, you know, or maybe it's more subtle. Whatever it is, give this a try. Betterhelp.com slash believe is the website if you want to get 10% off. Betterhelp.com slash believe for 10% off your first month. One more time, betterhelp.com slash believe. All right, anyway, enough of that. So Ryan Garcia, the fight is getting closer and closer. Oscar De La Hoya was speaking to Al Hawani, said he's going to do over a million pay-per-view buys. You put a link in here. Was it a link to a video or something else? Uh, so it's actually a link to both. There's the video of Oscar De La Hoya saying that it's going oh. to be a top 10 pay-per-view of all time. It's going to have a million views, uh, pay-per-view buys, et cetera, et cetera. He said the event is already a success uh, on Tuesday morning ahead of the fight. Luke Thomas uh, is the one who, who did a little bit of uh, researching there and posted this photo attached to it. What's the photo of yep. ticket sales or something? Yes, it's the uh, the that is all the seats available for this Saturday's fight. Four twenty. So hold on, blue is available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's crazy because Devin Haney is a you know he's a fantastic boxer as is Ryan Garcia. Given all of his mental troubles or his ups and downs or his social media faux pas, for want of a better expression, 
you can't deny the guy's skill. And the, and I would have thought with all the uh, the madness, it promotes interest in the fight. Granted, that's a lot of seats available. <laughs> but when is the fight? Uh, this Saturday. It's oh. in two days. <laughs> it's in two days. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, listen, Oscar De La Hoya is going to Oscar De La Hoya. You know, um, Brian Garcia continues to have a meltdown, though, in my opinion. I saw him doing a live stream or a, a clip of him doing a live stream. And again, same shit as what we showed the other day. Very erratic, laughing. Oh, come on. He's, 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 I don't know. Maybe he's just clowning and having a laugh with it. Maybe he's trolling everybody. How sick would it be if this was the greatest rope of dope, right? He's been training eight hours a day and then just going home and doing little dickhead videos on Twitter, and he comes out there and starches Amy. Brian, see if you can find it. It was a video on him doing a live stream. It was on a little Instagram clip because it's it is it is kind of crazy. But uh regardless, hey, I hope he's well. I hope he's well. I, I hope he is trolling us all. I really do. Because the last thing I want is a combat sports athlete suffering uh mentally. But to be honest, I don't think it would be from CTE or anything like that. It's probably just the nerves, the fame, all the rest of it, the money, the hangers on distrustful people around you you know like dana white always talks about this he, he gave the speech when i was on the ultimate fighter when we finished filming he gave it to all of us and i've heard him give it to at season nine when i coached it season 14 when i coached it he gave the same speech three times so i'm assuming he does it for every single one you know he said for you guys that have been successful on this show just be careful he said the people that are around you now the people that give a fuck about you now are the people that will give a about you when all your money and fame and all the rest of it is dissipated because for most people it will dissipate at some point you know so those around you now remember who they are you know because every scumbag every slime ball every con man every user people coming at you with this amazing business investment and all the rest of it they're all coming out of the woodwork and just trying to take what you've got trying to weasel something out of you trying to leech onto you so they can get in clubs and look cool or whatever the case may be you know, and that's probably a big factor of what's going on with Ryan Garcia. He's a young man. I don't think he's taken that many blows to the head where he's now acting like a maniac because of damages endured in the ring. You know, I think it's more to do with having a nervous breakdown, if anything, because because he doesn't know who we can trust. He doesn't know who he is anymore. You know, you have an identity crisis. You know, I don't know what his background was, but I'm assuming he comes from, you know, prob probably a tough background. And now all of a sudden, I don't know what he's worth, millions of dollars in the bank, very famous, you know. But again, maybe because he puts these little clips up and they get crazy engagement, right? And his opponent might be underestimating him. Maybe this is the most genius troll <laughs> that we have ever seen. Oh, man, that would be so cool. Or maybe he's legit having a <laughs> breakdown, Brian. I just found most videos likely. of him in his car. No, he was he, he was he was standing up in front of a camera. Uh, is it this one? Don't, no, no, no. Don't don't worry about it. It was on. It wasn't on his page. Someone had taken a screen record of his live. Do not worry about it. Uh, all right. Before we get to questions, uh, Harrington, one more thing. What have we got? Uh, let's see here. I think uh, I found this interesting. Magomed Ankalaev, uh, he tweeted out uh, at uh, Alex Pereira congratulating him, but he also tweeted at Dana White and Mick Maynard uh, saying not only the, the that he wants to fight Alex Pereira, but that he wants to do it at 308 in Abu Dhabi. So he's calling the location and he says that he is going to knock out Pereira in the first round on the feet because Pereira has no chin. Well... <sighs> That's debatable. I think he's basing that on the fact that he got knocked out by Israel Adesanya at 185 pounds after going through a ridiculous weight cut. Um, 308 in Abu Dhabi. Of course, he wants that. Uh, but he's the champion. I'm not saying that he's the boss of the UFC, but he also gets a saying where he fights, when he fights, who he fights. Of course, he does. Nobody has a gun to his head. Um, and of course, if you want that fight, you start throwing insults around. You say you're going to knock him out. So Magomed's saying the right thing. And the reality is he does have power. He is a big guy. He just knocked out Johnny Walker. I don't know who else he's knocked out off the top of my head. I'll have a look while you talk. 
Yeah, there's been a couple. But I mean, the thing I found interesting about that is like, is there something about a guy like Alex Pereira where he he has a, a, a such a striking advantage and people want to show off against that, that despite wrestling being the best game plan, guys will actually stand and bang with him because they want to be the one to get that giant highlight uh, knockout and steal all that star power. No, no, it's, it's no one's built like DC that. was saying it this week. Everyone's been saying it. Me and Wyman talked about it, right? We saw it against Israel Adesanya. The wrestling, the grappling wasn't high level with Glover to share It will be improving. That's without question. So whatever we saw against Izzy, that was what a year ago, maybe even longer. It was April, 2023, right? Or in fact, the first one was November, 2022. So we're coming up on 18 months or something like that. It will have improved by then, of course, but it's still going to be a low level. And I don't care whether or not they gave him a black belt, okay? Um, but it's the people that he's fought. He's had the best, he's had really good matchups. Now, I'm not taking away from him because this is just the division that he's in. The people that he's beating, they're the top guys in the division. It's not his fault that it's not studied, uh, scattered with loads of top level wrestlers, right? It just isn't. And that's it. He can only beat the people in front of him. You know, and the people that he's beaten are the top five. They are Israel Adesanya, Jan Blachowicz, former champ, Sean Strickland, former champ, Yuri Prohaska, former champ, Jamal Hill, former champ. And none of them are wrestlers. Again, that's not his fault. Although, if you want to try and find a path to navigate towards discrediting him, that would be it. But what are you doing? There's no, there's no need to do that. He's beating the people in front of him. And you could say, well, Magomed Ankalaev, let's see if you can pass that test. Because that is a real test stylistically, you know. But Magomed Ankalaev can probably, he's got just as big an opportunity of knocking him out than what Jamal Hill does, to be honest. I mean, when I look at Magomed, so he knocks out Johnny Walker, TKO against Anthony, decisions, Uzdemir, Krilov. Knocked out Iwan Kutalaba. That was a good one, if I recall. Before that, the head kick Twice. against Iwan Kutalaba. Exactly. Yeah. Daucha Lungi and Bola. That was a beautiful front kick to the face. Uh, he's a good striker, you know? It's weird, though, because what Pereira's done, did we talk about this on Monday? It books the trend of what everybody talks about for mixed martial arts. Because everyone says, you got to be a wrestler. you got to wrestle. you got to wrestle. If you can't stop base. the take one, it's the best base. You got to be a wrestler. <laughs> Fuck wrestling. No, I'm joking. Um, no, no. Uh, it, it is incredible that he's had such an ascension with essentially no wrestling base. So, hey, fair play to him. Fair play to him. Congratulations. You know, that has to be congratulated and celebrated because he's booking the trend. He's not doing what everyone says, right? Now you got to go find a wrestling gym. You got to do this. You got to go through a collegiate program. No, he's emerged as a kickboxer that is just knocking everybody out. Fair play. Can't hate on that. And if he gets through Magomed, then essentially this conversation is done and dusty forever. However, it will be forever puzzling. I hope he goes. And we're forward. changing subjects there. That's what yep. that was. That was the that's called the final word. Should we go to some questions? Are you, are you, are you no, okay? I just didn't want to say anything because I knew we were changing subjects. And I was like, let's just <laughs> leave that clean. Let's go to questions. Let's call it. <laughs> uh, if you have a question, please send it in to bympod at gmail.com. And if you're listening on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you find podcasts, make sure to subscribe. Leave us a five-star rating, positive review. It really helps out on those platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel and you hit that notification bell to find out whenever a new video drops. And if you want to catch over 500 episodes you can't find anywhere else, completely ad-free and totally uncensored, head to gasdigital.com. Use the promo code BYM14. Get a two-week free trial. Check out over 20 great shows on the network. Oh, all right. Wait, why did I come up there? There we go. Oh, there we go. All right. So first question we have here is from Mr. Joe Perillo. No relation, I would imagine. I love the podcast, Harrington. Fuck you. Um, question for both of you, um, or if it's just an episode with Bisping, you never know. Question, when you guys are doing the face-offs right before the fight, did you guys ever have a face-off where – you intimidated someone or you were intimidated or you looked into your eye, their eyes and you were like, shit. Any, any cool face-off stories, Bisping? I know the one about Vitor saying God ain't real. Any other ones? Or Anthony? 
Oh, Mr. Perillo, thank you very much. Shout out, uh, the Perillos. So, uh, yeah, there's a few. I mean, obviously, the, there was the the Vitor one. There was also, um, it's well known, the Chael Sonnen when he said, you know, what cologne are you wearing? Also, when I squared up against Jorge Rivera in Sydney, Australia, because he did this string of videos, which I've talked about many times, um, we got in each other's faces and I'm screaming and screaming and screaming and he pushed me and he pushed me quite hard. You know, it was a good push. Uh, and it, my reaction, I just started laughing my head off because I'm like, got it. Cause like at that moment in time that you're going to fight tomorrow, you know, you're going to get locked in an octagon. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to get physical there. And even though some tempers do flare sometimes, I still, I, I do wonder whether or not the intention of those guys that like are really going to be held back, are they really losing it? You know what I mean? Are they just trying to, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, it's not a case of hold me back, hold me back. Cause they know they're going to get held back, but like they're going to get locked in a cage. But if they snap the way he did to where they push you hard, it's like, bro, you've, you, you've, it. I knew right then and there that I had him. You know, because it was like, yeah, you've just, you've cracked. I've broke you mentally. You're, you're the, supposed to be the one breaking me and getting me off my game, which he did. He drove me <laughs> up the goddamn wall. And I, I don't mind admitting it. But the fact that he lost his cool like that, I thought he played into my hands. But other ones, wait, stare down. Any good ones for you, Harrington, that you remember? Other fighters, of course. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, yeah, I, mean, I don't mean your... Um, no, I mean, I, I mean, I, I think the one that comes to mind the most for me is like Connor picking up the chair and running at Eddie Alvarez. And it's like, what What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with the chair on front of in, on a stage in front of 40 people? You think you're going to get oh, to gosh. him with the chair? Really? I, Come on. I forgot about that. I forgot <laughs> about that one. Yeah, there has been some crazy ones as if he picked up a chair. <laughs> that was Jill's insane. Pretty open about um, John Jones scaring the shit out of him. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Hold on. Hold, like, what times I was scared. I don't, think there was, I don't think there's times I've been scared, but there was definitely times where I was like, it's going to be a tough one, this, boys. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Because, like, the one where you should have thought this is going to be a tough one would have been Vito Belfort. But the man was juiced out of his gills, looking absolutely gigantic. He's a two-weight division champion, light heavyweight and heavyweight. He's knocked out the last seven people in a row with every type of variety of kick you can imagine, you know. And all I did was tell him that Jesus isn't real. <laughs> at, at that moment in time, I was like, "That's it. when you're ready for a fight, I'm like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm not asked." But there's definitely been, there isn't one or two that springs to mind right now. I remember early in my career when I fought Mark the Beast Epstein at Cage Rage, uh, my third fight, I was like, oh, he looks a bit tasty. Uh, one reporter described him as having the face of a murderer. Uh, and he definitely did have one. So anyway, there you go. What somebody else we got, pointed, Brian? Oh. Come on. I had something cool about face-off. Somebody pointed this out to me, and it's something that I can't not look for now. <clears throat> she said, typically, the first person to smile when two fighters face off is the is the losing fighter there because for whatever reason they can't keep their cool and it's it's them breaking and cracking. Do you do you put any weight in that? Who did that study? Yeah, know. utter nonsense. Some girl utter I talked nonsense. to one time. Look, all these some girl you spoke to. Oh, I'll about tell you, Macy Barber. I'll tell you this: Jamal Hill smiled first when he when he faced off against Pereira. Yeah, like, look, look, listen. It's all you, none of that stuff. Can you read and make any kind of analysis off this whole thing? Whoever looks away first when they're staring each other down. Sometimes you just think, oh, this is. Stupid. John uh, you know, Jones has literally never looked his opponent in the eyeball. Yeah, he looks at the floor. It's just like you can't, it's like, you know, like some of these things, it's just like a weird thing. You say, all right, enough of this. When you're a dickhead, you know, so you can't, you can't. It just so happens that that guy lost when he smiled. Doesn't mean, oh, if you smile at a, at a face off, you're done for. Brian. So we got our next question from Mr. Nick Brugman, and he's probably trying to get you in trouble. What's up, BYM? Lincoln, Nebraska. We're watching UFC 300. Having a watch party here. We had a question for you guys. What is your favorite after party or after party story you got? And as always, roll Lionheart, baby! Yeah! Thank you, Harrington. 
Yeah, I'm trying to think because there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of after-party stories, and a lot of them aren't too clear. And also, I'm trying to think, what are the ones I can tell? <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. Well, 99.9% of them are not fit for air. That's just a fact. Um, I don't think Perilla would mind me saying this one. It was Quebec City. I had a crappy fight with Tim Kennedy. We went out, we'd had a few drinks. Fast forward, it's three o'clock in the morning. It's freezing cold. There's ice everywhere. We're walking down the street on the way back to the hotel. And there's uh, all our group. And then one of all his, uh, who's my manager, one of his, I think he's an investor, lovely guy, a black guy. And this guy comes over, some random dude in the street to borrow a smoke of Jason Perillo. And as Perillo is giving him a smoke or whatever, the guy goes, what the F you doing with the N word? Right. And Perillo says, excuse me. And he says, yeah, really proudly says, what the f are you doing with the N word? And Perillo just goes, bang, unconscious, <laughs> unconscious, led there in the snow. And Hey, I'm like, I think we need to get out of here, boys. <laughs> so, uh, Sorry, Perillo, if you didn't want me saying that one. Uh, whatever other ones, UFC 100, after I just got bingoed, out cold, still went out. I had a legendary night, hanging out with Jason Statham, of all people. Yeah? Uh, yeah, because I saw Statham at the last UFC London, and he comes over and he's like, hey, Mike, I can't do a Statham. But he's like, Mike, man, I haven't seen you since that night. We had a brilliant time. And, I'm, and like, for the life of me, I'm like, what is he talking about? I'm like, oh, God, UFC 100. That was 2009. Never mind the fact I'd just been knocked out. That was 15 years ago. Uh, but th there's been some good ones after nights that I've won as well. Not only the ones that I lost. But still, there it is. There's the show. Big, big thank you to Chris Wyman. Anthony and I will be back on Monday. Enjoy your weekend. 